Yes. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> First Wednesday of the month. I am going live, I believe, on in the Facebook group and on YouTube for the first time. Finally got it figured out. <laughs> um, not great lighting, but it is what it is. So every first Wednesday of the month, I go live on, I feel like I'm either looking up or, hold on, let me see if I can fix this. Oh, hey, Laura. Hey, Sabrina. Hey, Julie. Let me see if I can fix this so it's not like where I'm looking way up. Maybe that works. Probably should have figured this out before. Oh well, I'm half cut off, it's okay. So anyways, every Wednesday um, I go, or every first Wednesday of the month, I go live and do business and marketing Q&A for photographers and creatives on my YouTube channel and also in the private group. So. My computer is so full of videos and fi picture files right now <laughs> that it would not let me load Facebook to find what the questions were for today. Um, and I was running late because I had a call from the East Coast right before this. So um, I'm gonna need you guys' help to actually like type and let me know what your questions are um, because I'm using my phone and my computer so I have no other way of looking at it. So, um, let me know what questions you guys have um, in your business. Like, or what are you, first of all, let me know where you're joining from. <laughs> that would be awesome in the comments. Um, and then let me know kind of what you're struggling with, where you're at in your business currently. Um, one of the biggest, I would say, while well, I'm waiting on you guys to type it in, one of the biggest things is where do I find clients? Um, that's one of the biggest questions I always get, and that is so such a hard question to answer for everyone <laughs> because everybody's kind of like in a different um, value pattern. So really, you have to understand who your ideal client is and where they're at. So when are, where are they at when they are looking for what you offer? So your ideal client is not necessarily someone who has a lot of money. It's not necessarily someone who drives a certain car or shops at a certain place, but is someone who values art and photography at the price range that you need to be in in order to be profitable. And that's where it varies because different people um, are looking to get different um, amounts of profit or make a certain amount. I've had photographers that want to make $1,500 a month, and then I work with photographers that want to make ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month. So you, those clients that want to make $1,500 a month, photographers that want to make $1,500 a month, their clients are going to be in a completely different value pattern than the photographers who want to make twenty dollars and $30,000 a month because they're going to have probably more high-end clients, people who pay a little bit more. So it's going to be different. So you really just need to understand who your ideal client is, and then you need to have the right messaging and in the right place when they are looking for your services. Hey, Lexi, glad you joined. Where are you joining from? Hey, Julie. Let's see. Julie's on. Joan. Okay, did you guys put in questions? Because I'm not seeing the comments. Maybe you didn't. Um, somebody type a comment if you haven't already, and hopefully it'll pop up. I know Julia or Laura will. Okay, Lexi, what type of portraits best help build your portfolio if you want to get into taking corporate photos? <laughs> From Kelly, nice to meet you. Um, good question. So if you want to take corporate photos, then you definitely need to. So you thinking corporate headshots, or are you thinking more like business branding photos when you say corporate photos. Okay, headshots. Gotcha. So your portfolio needs to consist of headshots um, to basically attract. So when you guys are wanting to 
niche into something. Your portfolio needs to reflect that. One of the biggest things that I see um, is photographers going to your social media, going to your websites, is that there is a ton of different genres. And so if I'm looking for something specific and I'm somebody who's willing to pay, then I'm most likely looking somewhat for someone who is an expert in that specific thing that I'm looking for. So having landing pages and your social media be very clear on the one to three genres that you specialize in and that you niche in is really, really important for you to actually get inquiries from potential clients because they need to see that you offer exactly what they're looking for and that you're an expert in it. Hey, Patricia. <laughs> Hi from Las Vegas. I love it. I am also in Las Vegas. <laughs> um, so yeah, so making sure that your portfolio, for your social media, your website reflects what it is that you actually specialize in and what you want to shoot. Because otherwise, it's really confusing. If I have to, let's say that I'm looking for a newborn um, photographer, and I value art and photography, I definitely want to pay someone to make sure that my newborn is taken care of. Then if I land on a website that has um, headshots and boudoir photography and branding photography and then newborns, I'm going to be like, well, how good are they at newborns if they do all of this? I'm more likely to actually inquire with someone who has a website or a social media that I land on that all of their pictures are newborns and that is their specialty. So. If that answer your question, Lexi, if you want to take headshots, then have a portfolio of headshots. Um, I will say corporate headshots are going to be a little bit different than maybe business headshots. Like corporate headshots, a lot of times they want something on a solid background um, and something a little bit more, what I say, stiff. <laughs> um, and professional, if you will, if you're doing like branding pictures or creative headshots, the in style thing that's really great right now and sells really well is lifestyle. So if you're looking for someone who needs social media um, or they're more of a creative type, if they need branding, then I would say like lifestyle. So sitting at a coffee shop, um, walking down the street in an interesting with interesting architecture. So taking headshots that are a little bit more creative and outside the box versus something on a basically on a like a, a solid background. So for your portfolio, if you want to shoot both of those or offer both of those, then you can definitely have a, a variation. So maybe have some lifestyle and have some more kind of like plain backgrounds um, so that they can choose. So corporate corporate people might come in and be like, okay, yes, that's what I want is the more plain background, or they might even want some of the lifestyle if they see it. Awesome. I don't know if I've seen the comments from you guys on, sorry, on the Facebook, but awesome. What other questions do you guys have? Where are, you, where are you at in your business? Kind of what are you struggling with? Do you have any questions about like the next step, how to scale? Let me know. I'm trying to think. Um, we were talking about getting clients too. And well, that's part of getting clients is actually having your portfolio and your social media and everything have consistency in what you're portraying, like what artwork you're showing. Absolutely. Um, let's see. How did you start building your client base? So um, in the very beginning, it was um, word of mouth, to be honest with you. And it did not grow very fast. <laughs> that was um, word of mouth. I didn't do any advertising in the very beginning. Um, and I learned really quickly that that, does, that doesn't work very well. Um, you can build on word of mouth. Hey, Nathan. I think that that's how you say it with the fours in there. Um, 
We're doing live Q&A, so if you have questions, let us know where you're from first, um, where you're joining from, and also if you have questions, type them in the chat box. Um, so basically, word of mouth. It's really hard to do that. I did it word of mouth with boudoir, and when I started doing boudoir and specializing in boudoir, then there was not a ton of photographers. So it was at the very beginning of boudoir became becoming more mainstream. So I was like one of the only photographers in my area doing it. So word of mouth worked, but it, when you're in like weddings and now boudoir, when you're in a commodity driven industry, word of mouth is a little bit harder. And you can, I'm not gonna say you can't ever do it, <laughs> but it takes years. And if you're doing this organically, you don't need to make money, then that's great. Like that worked 20 years ago. Now that, you know, photographers have the internet and we're able to create an actual business from our passion and create profits from our passion, you have to actually treat it like a business. So you have to have a marketing budget and you have to market. Um, so when we moved to Las Vegas from Oklahoma and I started my business completely over from scratch, I knew two people. That was it. Um, I built my business and went from zero to six figures in two years in Las Vegas solely on um, digital marketing. So Google, Google marketing. Um, let's see. I think that's just the biggest thing. One of the hardest things I think for creatives that I'm seeing is that there's such a low entry into photography that there's not a lot of the business practices being put into place. You want the money, you want the business, but um, not everybody understands the principles of business. If you think about a long-term sustainable, a business has been, that makes profit and has been in business more than 10 years. I would hazard to guess, like I'm, I'm almost 100% positive, you're not gonna find a business that doesn't have a marketing budget. And when I talk to photographers, I talk to tons of them, a lot of them don't have a marketing budget. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that you can make because if you don't have a steady stream of ideal clients coming in, then you can't have a business. You can't have a business without clients. And what you end up having is a really expensive hobby. Um, Patricia says, how do you build a business when you and your partner have different styles? So my question for, for you, Patricia, is are you you're co-shooting with uh, another photographer and you both have different styles? And are you doing it on the same shoots or are you just having the same photography business and like one of you shoots weddings and one of you shoots boudoir or something like that? Nathan, so my friend Chris Peacock has been looking to start his own business. The website he tried it on was ran by Ben Dover. He hated it. What's the best website? Um, Nathan, are you asking about the platform to build a website such as WordPress or Wix or um, gosh, I just blanked on the other ones. But is, are you asking about platform? Best website platform? Okay, Patricia, all of the above. Um, that's a great question because I think that your style needs to be consistent um, in your business because that's one of the biggest things we're actually putting together um, a program because one of the biggest missing pieces is finding for photographers and finding that takes you from amateur to professional is really having a consistency in your style, having a style of editing and imagery that stands out in the crowd and really having consistency within that. So we're putting together how to find your style, your unique style, how to be consistent and how to really stand out. Um, I was just working on the slides for that yesterday, but so having two different styles in the same business can possibly work. I would say that you probably need to agree on a style for each genre. So let's say that you do weddings together. You guys need to come up and decide whether you're going to do your partner's style or your style or a blend of the two. And when the clients see that, they know what they're getting. And maybe on a different one, you take more of the lead on the style. Maybe you do newborns as well. And maybe you create more of the style, even if you guys are shooting together. So 
whichever you have to agree on getting a style that is consistent within that genre that you're shooting so that the clients who come to you for that specific specialty understand what they're getting. Because if they see a whole bunch of different things that look like they're taken from two different photographers, then they may want one specific style. And then if they get both of them, they don't really want the other one. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I need probably a little bit more clarification as to where you're running into that problem or how that problem has arisen in your business. Um, Lexi says, can you talk a little bit more about digital marketing and what strategies? Actually, let me let answer Nathan's really quick platform, um, website platform. So website platform um, that I love the most and what we do are when we do our marketing landing pages for marketing funnel landing pages for our private clients, I use Wix. Um, it's easy. It's user friendly. It's very affordable. Like it's so intuitive and you can do, you can customize it completely. Um, and the number one reason that I like Wix over Squarespace is that Wix actually lets you customize your mobile separate from your desktop. And if you guys haven't heard me say it before, your mobile website is king. So about 80 to 90% of traffic is searching on mobile now. So your mobile website has to be user friendly and it has to be easy, it has to load, your pictures can't be cropped. Um, so being able to customize your mobile website is super, super important, especially if you're doing digital marketing and you're sending traffic to your website. So one of the biggest things is, is on desktop, when you have your above the fold or what people see when they land, um, you typically are going to have a um, horizontal image on there because computers are horizontal. Whereas on mobile, you want a vertical image. So being able to, A, yeah, you can probably find an image that will work for both, but sometimes photographers don't have one that looks good. So being able to be able, being able to edit that separately, that mobile website separately from the desktop is really, really, really important. Um, so I personally 100% recommend Wix. And especially if he's going to be putting it together um, himself, it's super, super easy. Even if you're technologically um, <laughs> challenged, it's actually pretty easy. Um, okay, so Lexi, can you talk a bit more about digital marketing and what strategies have worked for you? I have an Instagram, but I've heard photographers discussing using Pinterest or building a Facebook group. Yeah, this is great. So um, I'm doing a video on this, but and I'll release it later, but I'll kind of give you an overview. We were talking earlier about having a marketing budget. A lot of times what I'm seeing is a lot of creatives are wanting to basically build their business for free um, and based on time and leverage their time versus their money. This is really, really hard. Um, it takes money to make money and you really need to have a marketing budget. Yes, you can post on Instagram. Yes, you can post on social media, but you have to pay to play. So on social media, you have to basically pay for people to see your posts. What I have found personally is you have to be an expert at Instagram and Facebook marketing in order for it to actually have a return on investment, so an ROI. And that's the biggest thing with any marketing strategy is you have to make sure that you're getting an ROI. And I have a video, if you guys want, I'll put it in the comments after I'm done. But on my YouTube channel, I have one, it's calculating your ROI. I think it might be the number one marketing mistake that photographers are making, and that is not calculating your ROI. Um, so Instagram's great. Social media is great in general, but it's more like an online gallery. So if you're actually looking to get clients, then you need to be paying to play. So, and then you need to be an expert. You need to know how the algorithm works. You need to know their rules. You need to know um, basically how to target the right people at the right time. Otherwise, you're going to be getting the wrong type of clients, cheap clients, um, or people who charge you money by going to your website and never inquiring. So let's see, Pinterest or building a Facebook group. So Pinterest, I have, I've advertised on Pinterest, so I'm very familiar with that. 
And I do actually have a Pinterest strategy. I don't pay right now, but I have someone that I pay to help build my brand on Pinterest. And I will be honest, you get a lot of traffic, but not a lot of conversions. So I think Pinterest is a great thing to have as a branding um, strategy to get your information out there, but I don't think that the ROI on it on the time or necessarily on spending money is actually that great. Um, let's see, building a Facebook group. So a Facebook group is good, but once again, they're making you pay to play. You have to know that algorithm. You have to be able to master that, and that takes a lot of time and experience. That's another thing that is on kind of the back burner or side burner is really how to create a VIP group that is gives you a good ROI. Um, but if you guys want to really scale your business and have a profitable business, you really need to be investing in marketing. Um, and to be honest with you, what I found with most creatives is that doing numbers and doing marketing is really not their passion. So I used to actually teach like DIY, like teach photographers how to do their Google ads, how to do um, social media marketing. So basically digital marketing. And what we found was, is there were so many <laughs> questions and so much confusion, even though it was like step by step, because it was just so outside of their wheelhouse that they literally came to us and they're like, hey, will you just manage this for me? So that is how we came to do photography clients on demand versus teaching you DIY. Now that's what I do. My husband and I, Damon, it's what we actually do for photographers. So we actually set up your marketing funnels. We set up your landing pages um, and we actually manage your marketing for you and get you leads. So right now I think we're averaging around 30 plus leads for photographers per month between those two marketing funnels. So um, definitely it's an investment, but you can either hire someone and outsource it, or you can buckle down and learn how to get a great ROI on your own. But by far, I definitely recommend investing in marketing. Lexi said, wasn't aware of ROI, would love a video with more information on that. Awesome. Yes. I have a video on that. I will. I don't know if you can tag on YouTube, Lexi, but um, I will try to tag you in that video and see if that works. But yes, return on investment. Like these are the things definitely that I'm so excited that you're on here today and learning this because these are the things that most photographers don't know, the business side, um, the return on investment, profits, like how to actually have systems and processes that get you where you wanna go. Um, so this is exciting for me because I put videos out all the time. I don't always get comments, but um, it's really great to know that this information is getting used and people are learning. So yeah, so anything you do, and it tells you in that video how to calculate your return on investment in time and in money. Because I had a photographer that I was working with and she was getting about, I think she said two to three inquiries per month or book shoots, maybe it was bookings per month. But she was spending about, I think it was like six hours a day on social media posting in different groups and responding and coming up with content ideas and everything like that. So when we actually broke down what her average sale was versus the amount of time that she was spending on Facebook to get that, then she was basically making pennies, like minimum wage or below. And that obviously wasn't what she was looking for. And at some point, she's going to run out of time. So if she wants to scale to 10 shoots per month, then she's going to run out of time because she's not going to be able to five times her amount of time on Facebook in order to reach that. So her return on investment of her time is not going to get her where she wants to go in her business. Um, so that's really, really important. And I talk about that in that video is actually calculating not just your return on investment when you invest money, but also when you invest time. 
time is actually your most valuable asset. The one thing that you're never going to get more of. Patricia, re recent wedding shoot, I love to make the client feel comfortable and at ease using laughter, taking natural poses, whereas your partner, not so much with your partner. Clients are not happy, suggestions on posing. Ooh, that's a, di that's a definitely a, a big difference in style. Um, candid versus posed. I might say that your partner is going to probably excel in the group shots. So that they're going to excel in like the family shots, like basically after the wedding when they take the family shots and all the group shots and um, things like that. Posing is definitely better. Um, but as far as during the wedding, you know, while they're getting ready, during the reception, those are going to be great, just candid shots of people laughing and things like that. Um, so maybe like your partner really shines and takes initiative and control during the pose section and you take more control with the other. And I think sometimes there can be candid-ish shots that are actually posed. I don't know that I ever take a ton of candid, even though I like lifestyle. If I've done lifestyle shoots, I like that look, but I'm still directing the clients on kind of what to do. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, like as far as I think that that's probably my best suggestion is to really just say, hey, I'm going to let you kind of, you're really great at posing and capturing um, group images. So I'm going to let you capture this part and then I'm going to capture, you know, this part. But in the end, if clients aren't happy, then it just may not be a partnership that's going to work because you have to have happy clients <laughs> um, in order to have a good business. Awesome. You guys have any additional questions? I don't know the face the Facebook live group. I don't see any comments coming through. So I apologize to you guys if I'm not seeing them. And I let's see if I click on this, if that works. Nope, that's me writing a comment. Well, I apologize if you guys are asking questions and I can't see them. Um, just I'll see them and maybe I'll just hop on live and answer them later if I have time. But Anyways, any other questions before we wrap up? Hopefully that was helpful, Patricia. Like if we were doing one-on-one -on -one and where we got a little bit more clarification and a little bit deeper into it, I might have a little bit more to say. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Hopefully you guys have some fun plans for the fourth. Tomorrow we are headed off to San Diego this afternoon. Um, my sister lives there and we're going with some friends. So it's going to be a blast. So awesome. Thanks for joining. Um, ooh, actually, uh, just a side note really, really quick. Um, over the past couple weeks, I did a giveaway just saying thank you for everyone who has been really supportive and subscribes to the channel and likes and shares um, the videos. And I was giving away two um, one year free coaching spots with me. So free business coaching. It's one one on one um, call per month for an hour with me. It's usually 250 an hour. So I gave away the first spot yesterday. Um, and then you actually have seven more days to enter for that second spot. So look for that video that I did yesterday for the giveaway and make sure to comment if you want to enter to win um, a year of free coaching. It's like a $3,000 value and it's awesome. Um, it's a huge giveaway. I've never done anything like that before, but I just wanted to um, say thank you for all your support and helping me get my message out there and helping photographers go from starving to thriving. So hope you guys have a great fourth and I will see you in August for the next monthly live Q&A. Bye guys.